Kwame Brown is gone. The City of Angels, Hollywood, just should be celebrated. Throw a parade already, whether you win a championship or not. This man was a bona fide scrub. He can't play. No disrespect whatsoever, but I'm sorry to call, tell everybody the truth. The man cannot play the game of basketball. He has small hands. He can't catch the ball. He's got bad feet. He can't really move, even though he's mobile. Doesn't really know what he's doing. Doesn't have a post move that he, he puts to memory that he can do two times in a row. He has no game whatsoever. Plays no defense. Doesn't have the heart, the passion, or anything that comes with it. And you're asking me whether this, oh, they hey. gave up too much? Please. The Los Angeles Lakers knew exactly what they were doing. They should be celebrate right now. And Kobe Bryant should not be saying a word. Kwame Hassani Brown. Born March 10th, 1982. Another player in the wake of Kobe Bryant passing that had a misconception about him is this guy. Now we're going to do something a little different today. The majority of fans of basketball consider Brown a bust in the NBA. But after researching him, I like the guy, I must say. And I understand his perspective. He wasn't living to be the greatest basketball player ever. He didn't have a plan to become a Hall of Fame player. Instead, he just wanted to make a way out of Dixville, Georgia, raking yards, working at McDonald's until 11 p.m. He just wanted to buy his mother a house and live for him. In that perspective, Kwame Brown is the Michael Jordan of his reality. But let's leave his reality for a second and speak about three reasons he wasn't the player you expected him to be as the number one pick straight out of high school. It's your boy JC Stunning Growth. Let's get it, man. Most of you may remember Kwame Brown from the McDonald's All-American days where he was a star in high school and a top three prospect along with Dewan Wagner and Eddie Curry, two of whom have been featured on this channel. What made Kwame special was his incredible physical gifts along with his agility and quickness at that size. The NBA marveled at what he could do on the court at 6'11 and built every bit like the southerner he was. While I think making a jump straight to the NBA played a role in stunning his growth, in my opinion, it went a little deeper. Stunt number one, bulking up. In high school, Kwame, as mentioned earlier, was a dominant big man, not only because he was taller than most 18-year-olds matched up against him. It was more attractive for scouts how agile he was at that size, his motor for his size, and his quickness for how tall the guy was. Kwame developed his motor and hard-working demeanor in Dixville, Georgia and Glen Academy in Brunswick. He spent his days raking yards and mowing lawns after school, then worked a McDonald's shift until 11 p.m. He would wake up at 5.30 for a 6 a.m. practice before he went to school. He did that every day of high school. It helped him develop his work ethic, strength, agility, and toughness he displayed on the court that made GMs and scouts use the number one pick in the 2001 draft on him. In their mind, as well as Kwame's, he would be unstoppable if he could add some muscle to compete with the traditional NBA bigs of the era. It completely backfired and made him slow, stiff, and not as agile as he was as a dominant high school player. Kwame Brown went from 6'11", 240 to 6'11", 270 pounds as a rookie, and it completely slowed him down and made his newfound game insignificant. He wasn't agile anymore, his physicals wasn't unique anymore, and most importantly, the bulking up made him a slow back-to-the-basket center that had no back-to-the-basket game. As a rookie, he averaged 4 points, 3 rebounds in just 14 minutes a game. Stunt number two, playing with Michael Jordan. As a young boy, 14, 15 years old, Kwame had to become the man at a house and take care of his mother, who had eight children, including him. His alleged abusive father wasn't in his life. Instead, he was serving a life sentence for killing his then girlfriend. Kwame was extremely protective over his mother, who he gave 95% of his earnings as a young kid working those odd jobs. When he got to Washington, he was a smart but sensitive 19-year-old kid, subconsciously looking for or open to a father figure in his life, and also understood his newfound pressure of being Michael Jordan's first selection. The guy took probably the biggest risk of his life picking a high school player number one. I'm conscious that if I screw up, I'm messing with Michael's reputation. I know he's going to work me to death. Those were Kwame's quotes right after the draft, and also the mindset of a child who hasn't developed enough mentally for what and who he was about to be dealing with. 
Allegedly, MJ's plan was to completely break Kwame down and build him back from scratch by forcing him to defend himself and be tough. He would call him derogatory names like flaming F-word, bum, and constantly tell the young kid with the number one pick pressure on his back that he wasn't shit. According to reports, he would even make the rookie cry in front of his teammates by the way he would ride him, expecting him to come to his own defense. MJ was even publicly critical of Brown in the media and in games, and this took a toll that I think broke his confidence young, and he never had a chance to recover. He averaged 7 points and 5 rebounds his second season, and made a respectable jump in his third year, the year MJ retired for the last time, to 10.9 points a game and 7.5 rebounds. There's some people you can treat that way and they respond positively, but you have to be careful with guys as young as Brown was, and coming from the family structure he came from. The pressure was just unnecessary in his time under MJ's thumb, and it killed Brown mentally. Stunt number three, Brown's development. Kwame Brown literally hit a development stunt by what happened early in his career with him adding so much weight, coming in early, and playing for one of the toughest leaders in the history of the game. Make matters worse, he moved from that situation to being traded to the Lakers with basically a younger Michael Jordan leadership-wise than Kobe Bryant. Bryant was equally as tough on Brown, but that was just the tip of the iceberg, so to speak. Kwame's skills were noticeably underdeveloped by that point due to him not really having to use them in high school and jumping straight into the MJ Shark Tank where he was so defeated mentally that there was just no way for him to learn. Instead, he was miserable in Washington and by the time he got to LA with Kobe was already set in a mindset that he was never going to be what was expected. Mentally, he settled for just doing his job, which was to get Kobe open. According to him, he did that job pretty well. He would never see those numbers he averaged in 0304 ever again, and it's been downhill ever since on the court. Along with that, the media and fans everywhere took shots at him, calling him a bust and saying how trash he was, small hands, low IQ. It must have been hard living in that situation for a while. According to him though, he got paid pretty well to be a bus as they say, and doesn't regret a thing. He would become a journeyman in the league who wasn't a good free throw shooter, rebounder, pick and roll guy, or scorer. But all in all, I gotta salute Kwame for what he's been able to make of himself in the grand scheme of life and accomplish all he has coming from where he has. He would spend some time in the big three after the NBA, had a few run-ins with the law, but is still standing and doing his best to provide for his family and live his life. Although he wasn't what we expected, I gotta respect it, man. It's your boy JC, Stunning Growth. Salute to Kwame Brown. I'm out.